Well, good morning again. It's good to be with you. The sun is up. I hope that you are. One of the things that I want to do today is just simply look into the Word of God for a few moments together before we begin our day in order that we might be encouraged. Encouragement for eagles. How to soar above the circumstances in life. So often we try and get above our problems and push away our anxieties in our own mental strength. But you know and I know that that fails. It will not last very long at all. But when we turn to the Word of God, it proves to be what it is. It proves to be changeless. It proves to be unfailing. And so it is there that we stand this morning and place our strength. It may be this morning that you woke up and uh, for whatever reason, you're filled with anxiety. You're filled with the worries about uh, the chores that you have to do today. But let's stop for just a moment, if we might, and let's look together and let's put ourselves in the proper place in the Word of God. Now, Father, I come and I pray that you will use this Word today to strengthen your people. And God, our strength comes from you. We have nowhere else to go. We don't look anywhere else. We turn to you. And I come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, in this time of uncertainty and lack of trust, a promise doesn't mean very much at all. We grow weary of what we hear every day by our politicians and many other people just knowing that whatever they're saying, it really has no validity, it has no standing, it has no stability, but it's not so with the promises of God. Just as God kept his promise for Jesus to come and to bring salvation to us and to sanctify us and to set us apart for himself, and he did not forsake that promise. Romans 8 reminds us in verse 31 and 32, he'll not forsake any promise. If he did not withhold his only son, how will he withhold anything from us? And I want to talk about promises, promises, the promises of God this morning for just a few moments. We're in a time of dividing lines. And you say, well, what does that mean? It means very simply in this difficult time that we're in with, with COVID-19, it is a dividing line for everybody's life who speaks of knowing Jesus as Savior. And the dividing line is very simple. Right down the middle, it's faith on one side and falling away on the other. On which side do you think that you're moving toward? Toward deeper faith or toward falling away? And just saying, well, there's no hope. I, and you're despairing. I want to say to you today, don't do that. Move back to faith. Stand there. But you can't stand there in your power. Again, we have to stand in faith by the promises God's given us and our faith in him. In the Old Testament, there are 7,705 promises. In the New Testament, there are 1,104 promises. We go into the book of Deuteronomy, and there, just in chapter 28, there are 133 promises. They include more promises than any other chapter in the Bible. And the old saying is, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves sitting on the premises rather than standing on the promises. And we want to make sure that that's where we're firmly planted. Now, I want to look at some passages today that may encourage you. And I want to do it if you will allow me uh, to be encouraged today from what the Word of God says to us, looking at the Greek, because it has so much strength and emphasis. Many times we overlook it in the English. But let's just look for a few moments there and be encouraged. Hebrews chapter 13, beginning in verse 5b, listen to what it says. He himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you, so that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Now, we read that verse in English, but let me tell you what it's really saying in the original language. The context, of course, is the changelessness of Christ. That's what this part of the book of Hebrews is talking about the changelessness of Christ. We're to trust in God for our needs and his faithfulness 
to provide our needs. And this verse really says he himself. It is intensive. It's very emphatic. He himself. And then what does it say? He himself will what? Never leave, never depart. And it means very simply to uphold, to sustain. That's what this word leave means and depart means. And God is saying, I, I myself tell you, I will always uphold you and sustain you. But in the Greek, there are two negatives before this word leave. And so we've seen already it's emphatic, he himself. But now we come to two negatives before the word leave. Therefore, God has promised, I will not, I will never cease to uphold or sustain you. I will never depart from you. Now, that means if we stand in faith and take God at his promises. And the word forsake here means to leave one in a state of defenselessness, helplessness, hopelessness, defeat, despair in the midst of very hostile circumstances, difficult times where we are right now. God's promising, I, I myself will not, never depart, leave you. And so God is saying, I will not, never let you down. And there are three negatives preceding these words. I will not, I will never, I will not forsake you. How could it be made any plainer to us? How could it be any greater encouragement to us? This is God who is speaking, God who cannot lie, not a man. And so it gives us triple assurance of God's all-sufficient, all-sustaining power to hold us up in trying times, times that are filled with testing and distress, times that he allows to come into our lives that are dividing lines. And his desire for us is not to fall away, but to move forward in faith. Look at what is said for a moment in John. John chapter 6, John 6, verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. Now that's true for someone who is turning to Jesus for the first time. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, Jesus said, if you come to me, the Father's the one who sent you to me. I will never turn you away, regardless of anything. And so it says, really, the one who cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. But once again, there are two negatives before the verb cast out or throw out. The sentence in Greek says this. It's strange, but this is the way it, uh, it, it sets uh, in the text. All which gives to me, the Father, to me will come. And the one who coming to me, I will never throw out. And so the Father gives to the Son those who will come to him. And he will not, he will never, not never, throw them out. Never throw them out. Now, that's a strong double negative again. So many times we're looking for positives, but the positives are enforced many times, like the text we're looking at, by these strong, strong double negatives. And so that means our salvation is settled and secure. And it means those of uh, in faith in Christ who turn to him in prayer, that he will never turn them away. And so, what a promise. Now, let's look at John 15, 7. John 15, 7. Jesus said, what well, we're looking at on Wednesday nights, abiding or surviving, the words of Jesus if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you want, whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Now let's turn back to the Greek text for just a moment and pay attention to what the Bible is telling us. It's saying, if you remain in me, 
and the words of me in you remain. Whatever you ask, it will be done for you. Ask whatever you wish. You say, well, that sounds, that's too far-fetched. I can't just ask anything. Well, let's look at it for a moment. Ask whatever you wish. It's in the imperative mood. And that means it is a command Jesus is giving us, everybody who knows him. He's saying, I command you to ask. I command you to ask. And then we come to the word remain or abide. Mino. It means to stay in fellowship. It doesn't mean, okay, I just read a passage of scripture and so I can ask God for whatever I want. No, it means continually abiding. It means looking to him, looking to him, looking to him. And on this basis, God issues a challenge to us. God is saying, you meet the conditions, and I challenge you that if you ask me, you will find out how faithful and how able I am to answer your prayer. And so it is a challenge. The God's, God's thrown down and said, let me prove my faithfulness to you. Let me prove my faithfulness to you. He says, ask whatever you wish. That means tello in the Greek. It's a strong word for desire, desire. And what the Bible is saying is as we abide in Jesus, guess what? Our desire is turned toward his desire. And our inclinations, the Spirit of God leads us in his direction and we begin to have the mind of Christ form in us, which comes from two things. His word, abiding in his word. And that doesn't mean just reading it. It means obeying it, abiding in his word, and our obedience. Jesus said, when you do that, you ask for yourselves. Not for our gratis gratifying a selfish desire in ourselves, but our desires are becoming his desires and our desire will be to glorify him and he will answer that kind of prayer what is your desire what is my desire that's a question we need to consider are we abiding in the word if we are then the desires that we begin to have and the bending and the turning of the spirit in our lives makes the ability for God to answer this prayer a promise that comes to pass. He says it will be done. And it means God will bring it into existence. If necessary, create the very thing that we're asking for. The same God who created everything out of nothing. You see no way forward? God said, I challenge you. Test me. Try me. Prove me. Challenge me. And I will show you. I will do it ask. A command to do something at once. Jesus says if we are abiding in him we're not to hesitate. We are to ask at once. If you abide in me and my words abide in you I command you I command you ask at once for yourselves whatever you desire and it shall be yours. What a promise to start the day with. God is always true to his promises. Always desiring to prove his faithfulness. Francis Haberl, the anointed, prolific songwriter, a woman of great faith. At age 43, she was dying. And as she was on her deathbed, she had a friend sitting by her, and she said, Please, would you read to me the 42nd chapter of Isaiah? And she began to read. And when she got to the sixth verse, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. After she read those words to Habakkuk, she raised her hand. And in a voice just above a whisper, she said, called, held, kept, I can go home on that. 
she did. She closed her eyes and went and met her Lord. Why? How could she be so faithful at such a time or believe God would be? She very simply had abided in him and discovered the truth that he is faithful and breaks none of his promises. And so to today, I say to you, remember God's called you if you know our Lord Jesus and he is holding you by the hand. He's keeping you. And so go forward today, greatly encouraged. Father, we come to you for all things. I pray today for everyone, Lord, that is listening. I ask God that you would just prove to be true in their lives today and flood them with your presence and peace and show them, God, you're faithful to your promises. And we enter this day because it's one that you have made. And therefore, we, because of your faithfulness, will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.